Hi, welcome to ToddFun.com, where I do what's fun, and today I'm going to take care of last year's Christmas tree light issue. Last year I bought these GE3, uh, G35s, uh, these RGBs. They, uh, I still don't like the patterns, but um, I had the, big, the biggest problem, without fully hacking these things, the biggest problem I had is I have a peak, and this peak we got power them in the middle and this would be out of sequence with this side of the peak and that looked kind of funny with these changing and these changing differently and what I want to do is being they both start at that peak um, go, I'll, I'll try and link to that old video here if you want to go review the, all the lights themselves and uh, and this year I'm going to make it so that they're in sync um, from that peak so the same thing will happen the same sequence will happen even if it's a sequence I don't like at least if I pick one they'll be the same now these particular lights cannot be, they cannot be sequenced in any way. Um, you you're 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 stuck with the with the patterns that they give you. I think there's like maybe 14 patterns I forget, but you're stuck with them unless you want to completely hack these strings and completely replace them. And I'll put some links at uh, toddfun.com and link to that in the down below here in the show notes um, where you can completely hack these things with people who come up with their own boards, their own everything. And, and that's great, but not everyone wants to go that far, and, and, and I put it off a long time this year, and I don't want to go that far this year. So I just want to get it so that my peak is in sync. Um, these, these particular lights cannot be chained from end to end. I don't have that option. Nobody does. You can't chain uh, these particular lights so that when, when you get to one end of the strand, you can start another strand. The reason you can't do that is because these lights aren't chainable by design. And even if you tried to cut them or hack them to do that, when they start up, they enumerate, the bulbs enumerate, and it wouldn't, the microcontroller inside these things would not understand that there's more lights. But the hack I'm going to try, a quick and simple hack, is that I'm going to hack it so that one control box, one of these boxes, controls two strands. Now, each strand has to have its own power supply but one controller can control two strands from the same starting point because it, it doesn't talk to the bulbs back and forth, the bulbs don't talk back but it will enumerate the bulbs this way and that way when it sends out a signal it thinks it's just doing one side, it's actually going to be sending that data signal to both strands. Now I've read where you can do up to three strands without getting any type of uh, extra circuitry like any type of buffers or anything like that so you definitely can do this for up to three strands but I only need two because I'm just going to go from a single peak um, the concept is going to be pretty simple. I have two controllers with two power supplies. I'm going to take out one of these uh, controllers and I'm going to hack into both strings together like that. And then the, the, each line will be powered by its own power supply. But I will tie the grounds together so the, the power supplies will share the ground. And I will tie the data signal together so that the one control box will have its data signal going to both. We'll show that at the bench, and then I'm going to show the final result um, up on the house. So there's one of these wires that's marked in white, and it's it's this outside one here, and it's the power. It's the five volts. And if you're looking at it from the back side where the screws are, then this is ground, and that pattern is repeated over here on the on the signal going out to the lights. The first one on this side is the five volts, and then ground. In, I mean data in the middle and then ground on the outside so power and ground, power and ground they're the same looking from the back side. I'm going to have to keep the uh, the power supply on both so I didn't even draw it over here I just drew it here so that you would know that in effect I'll put up a picture so here's a picture uh, of a close-up when I uh, totally took these things apart in the previous review and uh, and really gutted into them to show the circuitry and in that photo you can see the traces. So back to here we see that this is the same layout positive coming in here and this is the trace that you just saw coming over here and back giving 5 volts to the strand. The ground coming in from the transformer coming over here through a trace and going out to the lights. Well we gotta leave those power supplies because those power supplies can are you need all of the power coming from the power supply to power a string, single strand. So we'll just go uh, with this, we'll just look at it as if you have to leave those. So we won't confuse the signal anymore with that. So this is what we're really worried about. What we have to do 
is we have to tie the grounds together so we have a common signal ground. So we're going to have to take a jumper wire from here and we're going to have to get it essentially over to this guy. That will be one wire. We leave the 5 volts separate because the power supplies are pro provide all the current they need for the lights. But the data from only one, we want to X this one. So this one's going to be Xed. What that means is we're going to cut this wire and we'll terminate this wire right here with some shrink wrap. No data coming out. And then over here, we'll simply tap into it. should use the, the blue for that for data. So we'll tap into this control line and we'll come over here and we'll tap into that. So essentially the data will come out of this one control box and everything will enumerate both strands down those data lines. So I prepped the both the same. I'm going to snip the first ground and data because we have to do a lot of splicing with it. Just pull those two back and then I do the same on this side. Okay, these are the ones that are going to be spliced. This is the power that stays. We won't be splicing into the power at all. We will be abandoning one of these data lines, like I said. You just prep both of them like that. This will be the one I abandoned, so I roll it back, put some shrink wrap over it, and that will just uh, snip off and shrink wrap. The two data lines going to the two strands are here, and I've twist them together here and put some shrink wrap. Now I'll go into the single control box with some solder and then I'll bring the shrink wrap up to make it nice and watertight. Okay, the data from a single box is ready to go. Now the ground. All four grounds are now back together and nicely sealed up with some shrink wrap. And I kept everything green. And because these two strands are now going to have to always be together, some wire ties and wire ties the, for the wires and wire tie the box together too. So I want to do the smoke test. I like to do the smoke test live in case something grand happens. But this won't really show the sinking. I'll have to get them on the house for that. Well, they're plugged in. Oh. Well, I certainly see them doing the same thing. That's the initiation thing. And you know the data line is cut for that one controller, so that enumeration must have happened from just the one box as planned. <clears throat> and we'll go, we'll switch a pattern. Well, that seems like it's doing pretty darn good to me. Now, I've, I've had people report to my blog that they've done this up to three strands, but after three, it probably is too much of a load for that data line. I switched them all. Boy, they all switch exactly the same time. And I, that's probably because there's just too much load on the data line. But if you put a buffer in and do all kinds of fancy stuff, then you probably could do more. But, the, you know, how many do you want to go from a single point? This is only good for, you know, doing a single point, like a peak. Um, so two or three is more than enough for this solution. Well, I don't even think I'm going to bother putting them up tonight. I, I'm positive they're sinking just fine. I will put them up tomorrow when it's light out. And this will conclude... This will be more than enough of a test as far as I'm concerned. I click this button and as soon as I click that button they all just take off doing exactly the same thing. There's no way they can get a sync because they're running off the same controller. So it's not like the, the clocks are going to run differently because the other clock isn't controlling anything. Wow, that's great. I'm excited this year. Well, that was a great hack. I really enjoyed it. And uh, I have to thank one of my viewers. He chimes in as Chris, at uh, actually at toddfun.com is where he posted. He actually tried this hack earlier this week. Um, he was asking about it, and I was saying, well, this is what I've heard in other places. And he did try it, and he was successful, and that motivated me to say, I'm doing it too. So thanks, Chris. And uh, it works marvelously. I watched it for a while. I watched both strands for a while. It, they do not go out of sync, and you wouldn't. Of course, they can't. So you know, it's just interesting to see that they keep working so nicely. And this is going to look spectacular now. Even though I hate the patterns GE has, um, at least they stay in sync from that peak. Because last year, having this peak do one thing and this peak do another thing it was it was bad. 
But um, if you have a set of these GE35s or actually any of these, these style GEs, they're really nice bulbs if they didn't have the poor patterns. But if you have this issue, you want to sync them, you, uh, you, you can follow this hack, follow the video, um, and, uh, and you'll, have them, you'll have them from a peak. You know. But like I say, how many? Two. At most, why would you want to do more? Unless you're making some kind of a Christmas tree or something in your yard, there's no reason, reason to do more than two. Uh, but yeah, go ahead and try it. It works great. Um, if you like these type of videos, please subscribe. That really helps my channel. The more subscribers, the, the better the channel does. I really enjoy the feedback I get from my users. Many times I'm going through things fast and I just don't do enough engineering evaluation. But I have a lot of smart viewers, especially on YouTube, that comment when I miss a lot of things. I try and annotate that stuff so that everyone learns from it as well as... So, they don't, I, so that I, I don't want everyone to have to read the notes. So when those viewers really figure something out, I like to annotate the videos. So sometimes the videos will have new information in them, um, but they'll also be in the in the notes as well, the comment notes. But uh, thumbs up helps a lot too, and join again. Thanks.